Pacific. And on Friday, September 23rd, we had our campus wear purple and turquoise for those are the colors of, of suicide prevention colors. Um, we had a large amount of our student body showing support. Also, this last Wednesday, we had a Wellness Wednesday on suicide prevention with words of affirmation to ourselves to spread positivity. It was a neat experience to see our campus and student body and staff come together on such a large topic. On top of that, we are excited to have our Wellness Center open five days a week, which is open all day, with counselors we can go to if we just need someone to talk to during the school day. Every year since I've been at Torn Sire, our Wellness Center has been getting better and better every year, and this year I've noticed and seen that our school takes mental health and the well-being of students seriously as they have created an amazing Wellness Center that they still keep improving and making more comfortable for everyone. Um, that is all I have for Torts High, and moving on to West High's report from ASB President Allison Sai. Um, West just had their homecoming game this Friday and announced their king and queen. Um, their homecoming is this Saturday on October 7th. They also have their senior sunrise coming up, but have yet to make a date for that. West High's student section has been doing a lot better, and they have been decorating for them as well. Uh, they're talking to their own environmental club to see if they can help out with the trash issue as well. And also for their food bins, for the unwanted food and untouched food, people are putting them in the bucket buckets, but they don't see as many students grabbing them. Um, a report from South High School's ASB President Daniela Meyer, um, homecoming court assembly was a huge success and South's homecoming theme is glow in the dark. Their homecoming spirit week is this week and their homecoming game is this Friday. West had their first away games student section and it was one of their best student sections yet. Their fall pep rally went really well and their senior sunrise is tomorrow as well. A report from North High School from Kaya Cotero. Their homecoming assembly is October 7th. Their game is October 14th, where they announce king and queen, and the dance itself is October 15th. They had a huge turnout at their senior sunrise, and a majority of people there played all the games, got free food, and the sunrise was pretty good. Um, energy and student section has increased, and they have better plans for upcoming ones, and they're getting ready for their annual blood drive, and they're organizing and gathering participants right now. Uh, moving on to a district-wide concerns, as I mentioned last meeting on the topic of trash, all four schools have been thinking about ways to improve or counter this issue. And from West High, like I mentioned, they're implementing boxes students are putting unwanted, untouched food into, and has been working. And that has been working in the sense that students are putting their um, unwanted food in there, but they don't see as many students grabbing them, so they're thinking of ways to publicize that. Uh, with South and North, they have clubs adding more trash cans, and they see an improvement, but they're still trying to come up with more ideas to stop the issue as a whole. Um, and for Torrance High with this issue, we have our weekly Tidy Up Tuesday that we just started last week, where students pick up trash on Late Start Tuesdays before school for an hour of volunteering. Um, and we also are coming up with a spirit game to incentivize throwing away trash. Um, but other than that, that's all I have for the high school report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kukuno. Any questions, comments from the board? So in addition to publicizing it more and sort of making it seem um, like more of an activity to be able to get the food, have you guys also considered um, being able to reach out to the community to see if there's a need for the food that you guys have so it doesn't get wasted or... Uh, yeah, so at the um, Student Congress meeting, uh, we have mentioned that we do have these boxes. So um, I think Torrance has also added these boxes as well in our cafeterias. So um, I think now we're just waiting to see if they're actually going to go into effect after our student Congress meeting to see if that spread the word a little bit better with that. Mm -hmm. So like beyond just students, if there are other um, community-based organizations that accept food, maybe there's a way to make sure that the food, um, if students, if there's no not much demand on the student side, maybe it can go elsewhere. Yeah, uh, we haven't looked into that, but that is definitely an idea I can bring up to some of our clubs around campus as well. So thank you. Ms. Ms. Park, I, I asked a similar question at one of my school visits the other mm -hmm. day, and, and Nutrition Services does coordinate some of those connections okay. with community uh, groups uh, mm -hmm. with, with additional food, because anything that, that isn't prepackaged, um, a lot of fruit, for example, mm -hmm. apples, um, they can't yeah. reuse. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's pre, if it's prepackaged and then, you know, no one's touched it, they can, they can you know, put that back into circulation, but a lot of the, the things they can't. So they mm. they uh, they make sure that there are connections to the community. Mm. If I remember correctly, with nutritional services, we actually donate a lot of food from our district. There's a ton of food that we actually, I don't know. We do. I, we do. So that's why I want to make sure that we do partner with communities um, yeah. that we do. And it was a substantial amount, if I remember correctly. It is. Yeah. I don't have a number, but yes, it's yeah. a lot. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Kakuno? 
Your hair looks good, bro. That's all I gotta say, man. That's all I gotta say. So <laughs> I just, I've known it forever. We love the family. We all everybody knows the Kakuno, so we mm -hmm. love the family. So I just gotta advocate. And so thank you so much uh, for the report and uh, all that you do for Torrance High. Dr. Stowe, Superintendent's report. Thank you, President Hunt, board members. Um, so not as comprehensive as uh, Mr. Kukuno, but um, a, a few items of note. Uh, and I, I just mentioned my school visits and, um, you know, spending a lot of time uh, trying to make make it into all the classrooms, talk to teachers through the cafeterias and and, and you know, talk, talk to staff. And just, you know, the consensus is that this year is so much smoother than anyone in past memory. Uh, Many people can't think before uh, that back to the fall of 2019, right? And, and uh, but but people are just very very thankful for uh, you know being able to be back and and are are seeing a lot of progress, particularly around mental health and and how students are engaging in classrooms and talking and and teachers are reporting that they're not having to 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 you know pull answers out of students that they can that there's a lot of dialogue happening and I'm I'm seeing that firsthand and so that's that's great doesn't mean we aren't still having issues um, around mental health and I'm 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 glad Brandon shared uh, about the Torrance High Wellness Center uh, I think that is a model for for the district and in, in everything that they're doing there um, but uh, but you know we continue to to look to to make improvements and and refine what what we've put in place in the last uh, couple of years. Um, I've had a couple student leadership meetings. I met with uh, students from uh, both South and uh, West. I have North High uh, tomorrow morning and then Torrance High next week. Um, Jill Mara, Katie Crumpy, and I are presenting this Thursday night at the North Torrance Homeowners Association meeting at. Uh, at North High, I think Chris Sheck might also make an appearance. We're gonna we're invited to speak about some of the programs, uh, dual immersion, the early college program, and some of the things that we're doing around school safety. Uh, and and so uh, we'll be we'll be t speaking to that group then. Uh, the state of our schools mailer um, got delayed a little bit. We had we, had, we have a new printer and 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 new uh, designer on that, but it should it, it's at the printer. It should be going uh, very soon. Uh, within the next uh, week or so. So so probably by the time we have our next school board meeting that will have dropped in mailboxes and, and um, you know, make sure, hopefully you all get the, uh, a copy of that in the, in the mail. And, and we are sending that to all households in Torrance as well as uh, some, some uh, neighboring zip codes um, where we get a lot of students sent, uh, from, uh, you know, the, the 902, um, or, uh, not, not 90210, <laughs> not, not 90502, uh, you know, because we know a lot of those families are, are Torrance families as well. Is West Beverly coming back? Yeah, that's right. West <laughs> Beverly, yeah. Um, and, and then finally, uh, mentioned that the uh, Budget Advisory Committee, as well as the Smaller Footprint Committee, uh, headed by Dr. Butler, are uh, beginning to meet. So if anyone is interested in, in joining that, reach out to him. Uh, but we are very excited about both of those in particular, the work of the Smaller Footprint Committee, because that is something that, um, you know, we want to make sure that, that we are uh, good stewards of the resources of the planet and that we continue to find ways to, um, to, to not just have better practices for the district, but how can we better educate our students and families about what they can do as well at home. So um, utilizing that, that uh, venue for, uh, for that purpose is something we're very excited about. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stowe. Any questions, Dr. Stowe? Anybody from the board? A uh, quick question. It's wonderful that you will be presenting to the North Torrance um, Homeowners Association this Thursday. Do you know if it's going to be um, broadcast? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't believe so, but um, 7 p.m. in the North High Library, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they usually meet there. Usually, yeah. usually, yeah. usually, they, usually they're recorded and then we'll upload it on YouTube. And I belong to that board, so I, I, know, that, I, know, that I, know, I know that we'll be doing that. <laughs> You're so involved. I remember you were on that board <laughs> right. a few years ago. And so we're good. excited to have them speak, so it'll be good. That's Bring great. Tomatoes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Eggs. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right. Or communications, unscheduled hearings, non-agenda items, the board of education welcomes, um, input from the public. Speakers wishing to address the board on non-agenda topics have completed the appropriate submission form on the district website or in-person speaker card. Time allotted for public comments on non-agenda item is limited three minutes per comment. 
And for a total of 30 minutes, a speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another. And today, I think we have one, Priscilla Allers. I hope I said the right, from Turning Point USA. Priscilla Allers. Hi, I'm Priscilla Allers, and I work for a nonprofit charity organization called Turning Point USA. I have lived in LA County my whole life, and I'm appalled to see what is being taught in our schools today. Turning Point USA's mission is to identify, educate, train, and organize students to promote the principles of fiscal responsibility, freedom, free markets, and limited government so that they will feel empowered and not be ashamed about their beliefs, but will have a solid foundation for their values. While this is what Turning Point USA is striving to accomplish, the school Schools in LA County pursue to educate our children with the promotion of transgenderism and gender theory without the consent or awareness of the parents. Instead of promoting the importance of math, science, English, and history, the schools are undermining the authority of parents. When I was young in elementary school, I played t-ball and was one of two girls in the whole league who was playing with all the boys. I specifically got asked by my previous coaches to play on their team with all the boys because I was as good or even better than them. I am so thankful that at the time, no one told me that because I love sports and played as good as a boy that I should question my own gender. I am proud of being a woman and being a strong woman at that. In today's day and age, there are many people who do not even know what a woman is, which truly blows my mind. I am proud of being a woman, proud of being a tomboy, but also proud of my femininity at the same time. So many so many young girls today are told to question their gender if they're naturally a tomboy like I am, and in doing so may experience life altering consequences mm -hmm. if they listen to all these educators who are telling them that if they have these tendencies, they could actually be a boy. You're making them question and test their identity and strength. Simple truths based in science need to be upheld for our, our society to flourish. The growth indoctrination we're seeing is creating a lifetime of medication and hormones because you can't simply pause puberty. Men, can't, men cannot become women and sex chromosomes are encoded in the fabric of our DNA. However, school districts seem to have no issue secretly teaching girls that they can be boys because they feel uncomfortable in their bodies. Parents must be a part of the education process when teaching sexuality to students. Thank you so much. One of the things that we always say is when we see young people, we do appreciate the advocacy and their willingness to speak up. So we always encourage that, I think that. And so we welcome that, whether whether we agree on your opinions or not, um, we do appreciate to see young people really engaged and really kind of involved in this whole thing. Like for me, I wish I started a lot earlier, right? And so we welcome it and we are excited and we thank you for your comments. Um, going for anybody online, Mr. Mara? Uh, there are none, President Han. Right. Discussion, discussion action items. Speakers wishing to address the board on agenda topics have completed the appropriate submission form on the district website or in-person speaker card. Time allotted for public comments on agenda items is limited to three minutes per comment. Time allotted for each agenda item is 30 minutes per topic. A speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another. Any speaker cards? No submissions online. Thank you, Mr. Mara. So discussion on uh, 10.2, uh, board discussion on SoCal Rock raising student fees. And so um, I'm going to address this issue because I am also the president of the board at SoCal Rock. Um, and we had a discussion about asking it, every district that's part of the JP agreement um, to ask the boards um, whether or not they will be open to the idea of raising the fees uh, for SoCal Rock. Uh, one of the things we have to understand about SoCal Rock, it is only one of two regional occupational centers in all of California. There's one in one north and one in Southern California. And so the history here of SoCal Rock is immense and very diverse. Uh, one of the things that you realize is that there are so many people in our city, in the city of Torrance, that have actually taken a class, classes from SoCal Rock. Uh, they have people come back and to share their stories of how they will not be in the industry they are in today if it was not for SoCal Rock itself. And so one of the beautiful things that we're able to do is as a JP a group is to be able to support and to guide um, the direction and to make sure the stability of SoCal Rock itself. And it has been a blessing. Um, I, I, four years ago, I didn't even know what SoCal Rock was. I had to, uh, it was part of one of my adjunct duties as a school board member. And I began to fall in love with SoCal Rock, especially um, seeing the vision and seeing the students that have come across SoCal Rock. And my friends, even the city itself, sharing stories about how awesome SoCal Rock has been. But as a result, we know that SoCal Rock has gone through a major transition because it's no longer able to be supported by the state, right? So LCFF funding uh, dried up 
and therefore there was no more funding from the state itself. So therefore, I had to find new ways to um, find different revenue sources in order for SoCal Rock to function and to go forward and to survive, right? And so one of the things that we did was many years ago is that every child, every student that comes to SoCal Rock will be charged a fee of one, two, three, four, one thousand two hundred thirty-four dollars itself uh, to support uh, the work at SoCal Rock because that what that's what they believe would be necessary in order to educate or to teach that class, right? That's a cost per student at the time itself or thereof um, at the time itself. And so going forward, understanding that in the past 10 years since the LCFF passed, there has not been a single raise of the tuition. It's remained the same for the past 10 years, right? We know COLA has gone up. We know how cost of living has gone up. We know inflation has gone up. Yet we have not changed the fee structure for 10 years. So every expense has gone up for um, SoCal Rock itself. And so you, know, you got to understand that some of these classes are expensive, right? For example, our automotive class is $20,000 for the class. So in order for to us to be able to offer that class, we need at least 14 students at that cost of one, two, three, four, in order for us to be able to cover that class. Cosmetology is 30,000, right? And so we need 17 students um, to cover that cost. Right, and so because of this, um, right now, currently, we at Torrance Unify are the second biggest, well, second district that sends the most kids. Um, we have 69 kids that attend SoCal Rock as of now. Now, many years ago, we did send a lot more kids. We had over like 300, right? But that was before we began to implement CTE as Torrance Unified. But at the same time, we recognize that we still send 69 kids who find value in what SoCal Rock offers, right? I think Redonda Union is the only school district that's able to offer more. So recently in our last school, SoCal Rock board meeting, we finally gave Dr. Hilaire a raise for the first time um, of 5%. We have not given him a raise uh, for this whole time since I've been there since the time beforehand as well. As a result of what of, of the cost uh, challenges, especially with COVID, uh, we had to make a lot of adjustments. We had to lay off a lot of people. And so therefore it is still functioning and we're still growing. The focus now of SoCal Rock is really trying to uh, focus on adult education and to reach out to more of the adult community. But at the same time, the students is our bread and butter, right? The students is what we are turning. That's why the JPA is there. So the districts can work together to be sending their students to SoCal Rock. And so the board currently has, um, would like to be able to raise the fees um, for the student, right? Um, and so, and we don't know what those fees are gonna look like. But we wanted to be able to go back to our district so that um, that we would have a feel of how our districts would respond uh, to the idea of raising the fee rather than coming with the fee itself, but just kind of get to kind of the uh, barometer of where everybody stands on this issue, right? And so, and I think that personally that as a JPA, we have a responsibility. And I think one of the things is, is that we are the, the largest district in this JPA. And even though we have a robust CTE program, which we do, uh, and very good, I think that at the same time, we can't do everything either. We can't do automotive. We can't do welding, right? There are classes that our students would be interested in that I think that would be beneficial for them, like dental assistant or, you know, a lot of other fields where the kids can find uh, maybe their future careers, whatever it may be. And so my, my personal suggestion is that we allow SoCal Rock's board to – uh, come up with a fee and be able to bring it back to us so that we can discuss the matter together as a board. So that's just my uh, presentation of um, the idea of raising the fees for SoCal Rock. Comments, questions from everybody else? Or thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> The number of questions, but go ahead. Anyway. Anyone, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to do my best to answer the questions, by the way. And I, I'm going to ask Dr. Still and Dr. Butler to help me out here, too. And so, um, just a quick question in terms of background of how Southern California Rock um, work with us. For our students, I believe there are 72 no, students. 69 now. 69 now. No, as of right it, now. It was 72 before. It was. I think it was chopped out or something. <laughs> 69. Of those, um, what kind of classes um, are they taking? And also, um, is is around sixty nine students like an average number for um, our schools? And thirdly, 
how does that work? Does it work as elective credits? We give them credits that goes towards graduation of high school or so? Yes. So Dr. Yeah. So you want to answer that? Yeah. So I, I don't know that there's a, a normal anymore because, you know, during COVID, we had yes. like 15, 16 students in, in their program. So, um, you know, this is kind of the first year out of, uh, you know, that we've had this this many. So um, as far as the quantity of students, uh, and yes, it's a, it's elective credit typically that they get. Um, the, I, I don't have a specific list of all the different courses that students are taking. Um, the, the ones that, that President Han mentioned, the automotive, the welding, uh, cosmetology, those are some of the, the, the bigger ones. programs yeah. at, uh, at SoCal Rock, but um, you know. I think also we, medical assistant, dental assistant, and yeah, something like I'm that. I'm not sure veteran, exactly. Vet, yeah, veterinary. Veterinary uh, and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Maybe Dr. Company have some comments on this. Uh, what our 69th students are going in right now? Yeah. Um, the automotive and welding appear to be the top two. Yeah, you know for sure. Um, I don't. Um, and there and there's some engine like some engine like specificity around autom automotive as well. Those appear those appear to be the top three. Yes, a few scatterings of of cosmetology. Yeah, cosmetology would be very popular. Fashion is another popular one. Uh, amongst our students, as well as the pharmacy. The newest one is getting a lot of traction is sterilization of instruments um, with partnership with Torrance Memorial, as well as um, electrician, electricians. That's going to be our biggest, but that's more for the adults. But Tom, should, um, Dr. Kermit share was welding. Um, what I remember is welding, um, automotive, cosmetology, as well as um, the pharmacy aspect of things. Yes. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Just just a couple of questions. Um, I was just kind of doing a little homework on that, and I saw or ran into one of their annual reports. And in the annual report, I think at one point, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, on that we used to have about three to four hundred per semester. Yeah, students, right? Mm -hmm. And I think right now is it uh, sixty nine per semester? Yeah. So. What's been the trend over the past five years? Like, why is there a sudden drop in the number of students taking these classes when we know that, you know, we need um, these professions out there and, and there's a need for them? So I'm, what's, I'm kind of struggling understanding that dip. So what, let me just start off. Maybe Dr. Pumpy and Dr. Stowe can add on to this. So one of the things that is that um, the reason why there's been a drop is because RCT has gotten significantly good. Uh, I think that's, that's the thing, right? And so, and because RCTE is, so we have comp competitive classes that we offer, right? So some of the classes that we offer at SoCal Rock can now be offered at Torrance Unified, right? And so because of it, because we can do it cheaper in-house then we can do it outsourcing to SoCal Rock, that's why rather than sending them to those for those particular programs, right, whether it be uh, whatever um, kind of classes, right? That's why you see a significant. So one of the things you see is amongst the school districts, Torrance is the biggest drop off. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because we have the best CTE. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep it real. I, yeah. I just kind of say it just the way it is, you know, so, but that, that's the reason why there has been a significant drop off. So, and so, yeah. it, so are we anticipating that there'll be more drop off and therefore one of the factors to increasing the cost per student is because we anticipate or SoCal Rock anticipates that there'll be less students, therefore the rate per student need to go up. Is that the reason? And the second part to that question is if RCTE is doing well, which I know we're doing well, um, and we build more on that, are we going to see more of our students just going in this direction or other alternatives that are available to our students that might be, it's almost like if our students get these courses alternative for cheaper somewhere else, it's almost like counterproductive to raise costs at SoCal Rock because it's going to make it more expensive for them to go SoCal Rock um, for yeah, us. Right. It's, you know, but my thing is, is that, so what we're trying to identify now are what are the classes students need today that are not yeah. here, right? So that's the thing. We want to be non-competitive, right, at that point, right? We got to identify those classes like HVAC, like electricity, electricians, plumbers, you know, um, automotive, welding. So we're identifying now uh, courses that um, 
are not going to be obvious. We're not going to do A through G here, right? That's the thing. Why would we do that? Why would we do that at Torrance Unified? So there are classes that we're trying to avoid so that we can be a partner to the school districts, right? Trying to identify what are those classes that we can offer that we don't offer at Torrance Unified, right? So mm -hmm. that's one of the things that we're working on right now, identifying. This is why one of the things we were trying to ask Dr. Hilaire to do was to find those courses. Like, what are the overlapping courses so that we don't offer those, right? And so that we can offer the ones that the students can't need. But we just don't have the staff right now to do this, mm -hmm. right? And so- I, I know that there's no proposed cost um, for the increase, but is there at least some idea of what, the cost is to to so host a class you, right so the way the breakdown that i have is that what it costs to cost to teach a course right so if it costs twenty thousand dollars to keep, teach a course right if we have a lower cost i mean we got to find a way to get more students to come in right and so rather than that it's like because we know that the, the, the enrollment has been declining a little bit than to have lesser students in that class then we still can offer that class mm -hmm. itself so here's the thing right now is if there's a class sign up and they, there's not enough kids for that class, we have to close that class. We don't lose any money because we don't have to pay the instructor, but because we can't meet that minimum threshold, then we have to close that class, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what's tough, right? That's what's, which I think is sad because obviously we believe that these are good courses, but we just can't have enough people signing up for this. This is why one of the, um, one of the mandates for our board was that we go back to our districts asking, for more support, more partnership with SoCal Law. And so, but that's a legitimate question, right? So that's the thing, right? We're trying to identify those classes, but classes that we have without trying to get 18 kids in those classes, maybe we can do 15 because we raised our class $100 per kid or, um, you know, $150 per kid. And so, and that's that's one of the things that the, the board was saying to us is that you have 72 kids. If you even charge $100 per, more per kid, it'll be only $7,200. That's, you know, they're not asking for the roof but they feel like we have to adjust our, we have to raise the fee because we haven't raised it for 10 years, you know, since we did LCFF. Yes. Yeah, I think my question is more around like, there's no doubt that SoCal Rock has a, a, a great history here in, in Southern California and, and adds value to the community, but is it Torrance Unified School District's responsibility to ensure that SoCal rock remains sustainable and so for me the sequencing is a little bit off here of socal rock first needs to figure out like what those co courses are see the demand from the districts before because there's no saying that raising the fees is going to ensure that socal rock is going to be financially sustainable and is going to be okay so i think for like raising fees if your board decides to do it then that's that's just what happens but from my perspective it should the sequence should be more of identify what the where those areas are see what the demand is from districts including ours and then and then raise fees and and if the value is enough for the districts then they will send students but the order here seems a little bit off um and the other thing is if we are doing, if we are offering the courses through our CT program and are also hoping to be able to expand the CT program to better meet the needs of our students, then that, that seems in direct conflict with sending more students to SoCal Rock, right? Like, so if we're a competitor in terms of offering courses to the same number of students here as in, at SoCal Rock, like, we're not like an objective party to be able to decide that either. Right, but I, but I think that we have to understand is, we have to think about the other districts too, right? So when we is offer our class, right? So yeah, no, no, what, what I'm saying is the reason why when you talk about these classes, what I'm saying here is the classes that we offer, right? Of course, if it's not, that's why if, you know, we have a, a kid that's going to have a class that we already offer, they're not, we're not going to encourage them to go to SoCal Rock, right? But at the same time, that class may be needed for Manhattan Unified, El Segundo Unified. You know, they need those classes for those kids because they don't have it. Understand our CTE program compared to El Segundo's, compared to um, Manhattan Beach, compared to PV, is not nearly what they have. They don't have a CT program like we have, right? So they, so they have, they don't have the breadth of classes that we offer. So that's what, that's why we have to offer other classes. But at the same time, we have to identify those classes that we can send our students, right? So I would say majority of the 69 kids that are going to SoCal Rock don't have those classes here. 
Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I yeah, do understand yeah. that. But I, I also think when we're talking about other school districts, mm -hmm. and I, I don't see making sure that SoCal, that SoCal Rock is a, uh, able to offer certain courses to other school district students as part of our mandate as Torrance Unified School District, right? And so if, we, if we're if we using that as a part of like the conversation, a point, an arguing point of we need to raise the fees and ensure that SoCal Rock can offer these courses to students in other school districts, that doesn't make sense to me because in a lot of ways, our dual language immersion program, our dual enrollment program, all of these things that we've invested a lot of resources into and in distinguishing ourselves from other districts to be able to bring more students or make sure that our students are able to um, have really unique or wonderful opportunities like that we, we're not paying for our students to go to another community-based groups dual language immersion program so why for a CT are we doing that because or are we I considering think, doing because that? I think because of the fact that we have this unique situation that we're JPA the JPA thing is really awkward right because of the fact this is a joint partnership association, right? This is why the decisions that made our for SoCal Rock, the decision, the direction of that, of that institution is driven by one member from each school district, right? That's why we all have an equal say in the decision of the direction of SoCal Rock. It's because of that mandate. It's like, we're, for example, we send someone from here to have that voice so that we can express our opinions of what we would want for SoCal Rock, right? So the JPA, is, it's, it's interesting. For example, let's say it folds. Let's say that SoCal Rock folds. What happens then? Where does the property go to? You know where it goes to? It splits amongst the six. We got to figure out what we would do with that property. Like, and you know, for us, for me personally, it's right behind 20, 20 Unified. I would not want to see it going to Torrance High School with something else, right? So if it fold at the end of the day, we're the beneficiaries, right? We all split, or I don't know what we would do, but it still belongs to us. But here's the thing. Who does SoCal Rock belong to? It belongs to the districts. That's the thing, right? It belongs to the districts, right? So that if it folds, all the assets somehow go back to the district. So there, I think that's why we do have a, a responsibility together cooperatively, you know, uh, to figure out how can we maximize and sustain this institution to the best that we can. So, and here's the thing, the students that get, you know, who are going to come, you know, those 72 kids, 69 kids, they're going to benefit from whatever classes that we're going to offer because we don't offer it here, right? Those 69 kids, right? And so obviously, those things that kids are going to be the one paying the cost because they're taking a class itself, right? And so, and here, that's why when we look at our students right now, it would, it, I would say, that's the responsibility that I feel like we have. Of course, that's not a mandate from Points Unified. I'm not saying that at all. But as a JPA, because we're a member of this JPA, that we need to figure out how can we cooperatively, corporately work together in order for us to make sure the success of SoCal Rock. That's why it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I, I yeah. think it would be great if SoCal Rock is able to be sustainable. But again, I think that if we are operating in some sort of market that SoCal Rock needs to first demonstrate that they are adapting and, and are offering something of value that that um, districts and students want before we're able, like we shouldn't be protecting just because we feel like there's this the JPA, right? No, like, no, but that's the thing, right? We're offering programs now, right? There are things that we're coming up with, newer new classes, right? We're coming up. So with, yeah, yeah, I think that should come first and yes. then we should do make the decision about um like But I think it's a matter of just fairness, right? At the same time too, right? We have not raised the fees for 10 years. You know, it just it makes no sense that that we have not raised the only thing that has not been raised in the past 10 years is Costco hot dog, right? By the way, I, that's a good one. Anyway, I'm just saying for 10 years, it's just that, you know, everything has gotten more expensive except for this fee, you know? And I think in order to sense of fairness, I think, I personally think it would be great if we were to at least have that discussion so that we can hear from SoCal Rocks board um, what that price would look like and would that, would that be reasonable to us? Because we, when they bring it back, we can say, no, we're done. I, that's why I feel like this discussion is so quite strange yeah. because SoCal Rock can bring us the new fees whenever. Like it's not up to us whether we receive a request for like new fees or not, right? So I, I no, I, I think no. My thing is because at that time, if we say no to it, but the other four judges that say yes to it, then it's done, right? They will vote on it, right? They will say this is going to be the fee, and then. Um, then they'll bring, we'll bring it back to our boards and then all the boards will decide. And at that point, 
And so be it. It will be, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I would expect. Well, that's, what, that's what's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I think that I want us to at least present our opposition or are okay with this, you know, so that at least they understand the, the temperature, right? What they don't know is where does our district stand on this issue, right? We're informing them so that when they kind of come up with this number, they would have these things in mind, right? You know, Torrance Unify is really like, you know, so rather than raising it 30% or 25, they might just do 10, right? Because, you know, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. We've got to raise it, but you know what, Torrance is not feeling about it. So therefore, you know, it might affect the way how much, you know, or maybe not do it at all. I don't know what they're going to say. You know, well, I, point, I would you know. hope that the decision would be, the fee increase decision would be based on like what is fiscally needed for SoCal Rock and less informed just by what the temperature of individual board members on on how they feel about SoCal Rock, right? But like, again, but again, it's again, like I said before, is when you ask for the cost per student, it's hard to determine that, right? Because you got to figure out what is the cost per class, right? So it's 30,000, right? We know what the cost per class is, right? And so the question that becomes is, is we need a certain amount of students in order for us to be able to cover that cost, right? So, you know, can we get 18 students to help cover that cost? Or is it more possible for us to get 15, right? So that's why for us, we feel like that's why it's hard to say, is it one, two, three, four? Is it 1250? Because we know what that cost is, right? We know what the class costs, but it's hard for us because here's the thing is that these classes too are also offered to adults and the adult prices are a lot higher than what we charge, a lot higher. So we would charge maybe the same class as to an adult person, like 1800, rather than we charge one, two, three, four. Right, so we're trying to maybe minimize the cost to our students. That's why when you're asking the co- question, what is the cost per kid? It's hard because some of these classes have adults, some of these classes, you know, we, got, we know what we need in order for us to hit that number. That's why it's hard for us to determine, you know, at that point, you know. So when we get the space cost down, this fundamental cost, okay, we know that, you know, our revenue is going to be 1300 per student, right? So therefore now we can kind of calculate better. Okay, that means, you know what, for the adult people that we can charge this much more or less or whatever, and then, you know, try to figure out what we're going to need, right? We need a base. So that's what it is. Everything is based upon this one, two, three, four, because of the fact that that's kind of a baseline revenue number that we can count on, right? So that we can kind of like figure out what else we're going to need. This is why it's when they're asking for the per cost student, how much it is. That's why it's so hard. So- but I, I hear what you're saying. I do understand what you're saying. Well, it's kind of backwards. Yeah. Dr. Gerson. I know you're waiting for me. I know you're waiting for you. So <laughs> obviously I know that Scrock has an amazing history and I've talked about it before. You know, my sister went, got her vet tech certificate. It was amazing. And it was in a very important part of our community. And 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 what I hear Ms. Park talking about and what I hear Dr. Muhammad talking about is demand, talking about um, do they have a product that isn't being supplied by us? Is there a product um, worthy of the demand and worthy of the fee that we pay now? Um, and so I have to go back. I went and, um, and rewatched the board meeting. It was October 18th. So literally 11 and a half months ago, the Dr. Hilaire, the superintendent of SoCal Rock came before us. And so, um, you know, I, I watched, so he said it was established in 1967. He talked about how when the local control funding formula came out, how that was kind of a, a death sentence to a lot of ROCs. And then he talked about some other things like a career guidance specialist. Um, we have called career college and career counselors on our campuses. He talked about, you know, they offer resume writing workshops and mock interviews. Um, that didn't seem like something that isn't, you know, is, is that um, high demand that, that isn't something that we supp- don't supply. Um, and then talked about hands-on training in their facilities. And he specifically mentioned some courses. So he started off with 3D character design and animation. And um, I'm going to bring up El Camino, and I will tie it in at the end why I keep talking about Elco. Um, so that's Art 144 for them. Uh, let's see. He also talked about video game design, which is Art 145 at El Camino. Automotive, um, you know, El Camino's program says, 
you know, the student will gain proficiency in safety practices, automotive services, testing, troubleshooting, brakes, suspension, wheel alignment, engine tune-up, electrical systems, fuel systems, emission systems, transmission, drive trains, engine repair, engine rebuilding, automotive machine, or air conditioning. Um, the same thing, long list for cosmetology and um, preparing students to take the, um, the certification exam. Emergency medical technician, another um, another program that El Camino does and, you know, over a course of 170 hours prepares them for their EMT um, certification test. And so we know that we have a partner who also does all of this. And, and as Ms. Park mentioned, you know, the, the dual enrollment program where we do not lose money and El Camino also gets paid um, from the state. Well, I had asked um, the superintendent, Dr. Hilaire, how um, the cost of courses was determined. And he said, after about a year and a half, one superintendent just said, just take one sixth of the district's money. Um, one sixth is a huge amount because that goes to more than just paying for an instructor in one of our classes. It goes towards so much more that the Torrance Unified supplies, which I did talk about at that meeting. Um, you've already talked about the how much. Um, one of the things that that really bothered me, and and so I had asked uh, Dr. Hilaire is is what has SoCal Rock done to learn about TOSD, to learn about our district's needs, to collaborate with us, and and to understand how they could be a good partner. Um, and so I have to turn to either uh, Dr. Stowe or Dr. Crumpy and ask you, and I already know the answer, but. How many times has uh, Dr. Hilaire or SoCal Rock met with your staff to discuss courses, offerings, and, and TUSD's needs? <clears throat> Today. Oh, there we go. Um, so it's my understanding that um, Dr. Hilaire met with the North High principal um, on one occasion last year and a counselor from SoCal Rock um, met with the Torrance High School counselors. Um, I believe from that October meeting, um, in that in that collaboration with trying to come up with something different from our offerings and El Camino's dual enrollment, you know, partnership offerings, we were um, waiting for Dr. Hilaire's plan on um, on on next steps, and then our principals were were readying for for the when we hear from him for those next steps and meetings. So in the last 11 and a half months, one meeting. Let me, but let me clarify that. So well, I, 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 I want to- No, 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 I, I, no, I, I, I think you asked a question, right? So can I answer that question? Because she's not the only one who has met with Dr. Hilaire. Kara Heinrich, Heinrich met Dr. Hilaire about a couple months ago, right? So there have been other outreaches, right? So I'm not sure if everyone on the cabinet is aware of this. I can double check and confirm yes. and get back with you, but my understanding is that that meeting didn't occur, that Dr. Heimrich is waiting for Dr. Hilaire um, with the presentation that he was working on to come and meet with her. But I, I can double check yeah, and please confirm. Do. Okay. Um, I'd also recommended at that meeting that Dr. Hilaire reach out to, um, to the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce. I talked about their young business um, uh, group and hype. And the amazing ideas, like they, they are just, talk about innovation. They are a wonderful group to meet with and just get those juices flowing. Um, so I reached out to um, the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce and asked um, in the last year, how many times has uh, SoCal Rock or, um, or their superintendent met with any member of, of the, the chamber? And um, it hadn't. And I learned that in fact, the chamber has um, sent invitations for SoCal Rock to participate in events, um, which have gone unanswered. And so the reason why I, I keep talking about that is because I know, um, you know, Assembly Member Muratsuchi did a, a great deed around, you know, around the time of LCFF and gave SoCal Rock a significant uh, amount of money to be able to reinvent itself, to become innovative, um, and to make itself useful. I had hoped that my questions a year ago would help um, generate something to, to get more collaboration. Um, so for 
a very long time. You have Torrance Unified, you have El Camino College, you have the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce, you have our business community. We are constantly collaborating and innovating and working together um, for the benefit of, of the students of Torrance. And, and I see SoCal Rock with, even in the last year and the, the decade prior in isolation, um, even as they're sitting around right now discussing with themselves, oh, what courses do we think are going to be useful or people going to need, rather than actually coming and collaborating with the community. Um, I think that SoCal Rock has painted itself into a corner. It's making its, uh, it's already made itself, if not completely partially obsolete. Um, I, I cannot overstate the value um, of, of, of collaboration with, with so many community members. I remember when we started the Educators in the Workforce program, which was Dr. Stowe's brainchild and got to participate with that and, and just what came out of that and what continues to come out of, of us working as a Torrance community. And so until I see SoCal Rock change its direction, um, to see its superintendent change his direction and actually engage with the community as a whole and all of us together to really find out if there is a path for them to be um, once again, what Scrock was in the past to be truly an um, an invaluable member of the community. Um, at this point, not only do I not approve the raising of fees, I I go back to what you were talking about: is perhaps the assets are worth more um, than the the services offered. So at this time, I do not see the amazing value in SoCal Rock that I saw in Scrock um, all those years ago. So that's kind of where my position is today. Thank you. And the, so just to add to that comment, those comments, number one is, is that SoCal Rock is moving forward, right? So one of the big partnerships that we have now is with West Cal Academy. That's our biggest proposition right now. So West Cal Academy is partnering with us, with the LA County Probation Office, with all, a lot of, with, uh, with Supervisor Han's office, is because West Cal, West Cal Academy will be now kind of like the, the youth development force for the probationary office. So the way that this is going to work is, is that we are sending our instructors now, for example, to a detention center to educate and to train uh, or to provide classes for these students so that when they do become 18, they can come back to SoCal Rock and finish those courses, courses that they take in prison. They can come back and they can um, take those courses. So, for example, a couple of weeks ago, I was able to go to a field trip at SoCal Rock with that very first class. We had eight probation officers, eight students, um, and we sat in a class of CPR. And it was a remarkable sight because of the fact that these kids, um, for whatever reason, maybe because of whatever life experience they've gone through, have now have a chance for life. And so now we are partnering with West Cal Academy to be able to uh, be that kind of educational source for these students. So the funding will come now, not from the state as much, it will come through the county. So we have a long-term plan regarding with these, uh, with these students here in the probationary service. So service, uh, Supervisor Hans' office came to SoCal Rock. We have attorney Rob Bonta coming down to SoCal Rock because of the fact that they're all looking at this paradigm now, of uh, another avenue perhaps where we can now offer services to these students in prisons or detention centers so that when they become 18, they will have a pathway perhaps to a location, whether it's plumbing, whether electrician, whatever it may be. We've become now an electrician, our electrician department, which is very new, about, about a year or two years old, has been thriving and growing. We are trying to, again, increase our adult enrollment right now. Um, so things are moving um, forward. Um, and so I think that's where we feel like is the direction of where SoCal Rock's gonna go, is gonna be with this partnership as well as um, as well as the adult school, right? And so that's why you see our adult enrollment increasing, right? It, it's just increased a lot uh, than what it was before because of the fact that to say that we're not being, in, 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 um, you know, coming up with ideas and trying to move forward, we are. I think that's an unfair statement um, because obviously, if you saw what we did with Los Cal Academy, if you're seeing what we did with our adult enrollment, to see our new programs, I think we are moving forward, right? To say uh, regarding the whole. Um, the whole idea of partnership, right? And you have to understand here too, at the same time, uh, we had to cut a lot of our staff off in the last two years, right? So when you're asking like, how many times have they come? How many times have they done anything? It's, it's now 
us as a work. So we're almost acting like a working board, right? I'm the one going asking, you know, and I've asked if we can have where uh, monthly lunches with our counseling staff at Torrance High School, but they said no, right? So we come with, so to say that we've not come up with ideas, that's unfair because there are things that I've asked if we can do, but then my the response has been no. So to be fair, we have asked. I, I think to say, to say, hey, you know what, can we do this? Can we do that? The answers have been no. And so I think it's unfair when you say, because we just haven't pushed it. And so I think that has to be understood as well, right? And so my thing is, is that we just don't have the staff right now, right? We just let go of our assistant superintendent recently, right? Um, and then we lost another person recently. So we are really down to the bare bones, right? Mr. Hunt. So, yeah. I hear you saying we a lot, uh -huh. but it, but you're talking about SoCal Rock. Yes. Your we right now is you are the president of this board. Yeah. So I, I want to hear more we about the benefits to Torrance Unified and the protection of Torrance no, Unified. I, I, no, I think the benefits is that we have 72 kids that we have 72 Unified. kids that are there. We have 72 kids that are there. Well, 69, right? We used to have 333. Right to say that we don't that we don't offer value, I think is unfair. I think for the seventy-two kids that are taking sixty-nine kids that are taking classes there, there is value because we don't offer those classes here, right? And so that's my point. When I say we, you're right. I represent Torrance Unified, but at the same time, Torrance Unified had asked me to have this adjunct duty where I'm the president of the SoCal Rock Board. So I'm at I'm I'm trying to relay both sides where I have calm to people in our district asking if we can do certain things. And the answer was no. So for you to say that, have you come? Have you kind of addressed the board? That's an unfair statement because you don't know the approaches that we've had. I could share with you, but I don't want to do this publicly in that way, right? So we, ha I have come and asked, can we do certain things, right? And the answer was no. And so my thing is, I would appreciate, right, is that there will be a little bit more uh, collaboration on both sides. That's what I'm saying. So understand, I sit on the board of these two organizations, right? I serve as president of both of these organizations, right? And the funny thing is, as I serve as partnership, uh, president of both these organizations, it's amazing to see how little collaboration there is, to be honest, right? See, that's my frustration, right? And so I'm trying to bring these two organizations to work collaboratively, if we can, right? I'm not saying that, you know what, of course, we're trying to find classes that are not going to conflict with Torrance Unified. That's a given, right? Why would I do that? Why would we spend money and pay more of something we already offer? But my thing is we are offering classes that I believe that are beneficial for the 69 students, right? And maybe it can increase if there was more awareness of what SoCal Rock offers, right? That's a challenge in our schools. Right. That's a big challenge, you know, and I'm not going to sit there and see how many sit all the counselors saying, hey, but what I can tell the counselors are, hey, you know what, this is what SoCal Rock offers, you know, you know, th that's all we're asking here. And so my thing is, again, past 10 years, we have not increased the fees. Right. And so and I think that we do have value because we do send 69 students to SoCal Rock. Right. We're the second number of students, right? From Redondo Beach, probably number one, I think. I think they do 72, right? But we're the second. What used to be the highest, right? And so to go from 333 to 69, you know, we got to figure this thing out. So my question is, again, as a board, you know, I can go back and say, you know what, we discussed this, and this is the kind of the feeling that we have as a board, as our representation to the board of SoCal Rock. Because again, understand, Prior to this meeting, I already told them the likelihood of this coming forward from our board is nil. <laughs> so it's not like they don't know. I'm just doing my best right now to I figure out. It's nil. Not nil, but I'm just saying my best right now to say, hey, can we I, I, yeah. address this issue of raising the fee? <laughs> because again, when we had a discussion, I was say, I, as a representative Torrance Unified, I said, we're not going to be okay with raising the fees as a district. Just I just made it clear to them. Yes. I I I don't agree. I yeah, think okay. personally, I yeah. don't agree with the, the assumption that like 
where we don't agree with raising fees at all because uh, mm -hmm. it's the one fifth of, of this board. Um, I think for me, what I would want is transparency into how the fees are determined. Because for me, I want there to be clear separation because the scope right now of SoCal Roth, it's not just high school students. You're saying right. that there's an increased focus on adults or yeah. these other partnerships. And so as I, I don't think it's responsible for us as Torrance Unified School District to be increasing fees to, so that SoCal Rock can pursue these other other partnerships or have um, more resources or staff or whatever for these. Uh, so I, I just want a clear separation when we're talking about increasing fees for students that that is to match with whatever the like market rate is because of the 10 years that it's been since they've raised fees. And I want like clear justification for why a fee is a certain amount rather than it be based on based on the sentiment of board members at different school districts, we're going to raise it some percentage. Like that won't fly for me. Right. So mm -hmm. again, the basis that we have right now is one, two, three, four, right? That basis affects what we charge for adults. Yes. It has to, yeah. right? Because if we have to charge a larger rate then for the adult school to cover the cost that we can't not meet because of one, two, three, four. Does that make sense? Right, because we have a set cost, right? And so we know that we could probably get 15 students, one, two, historically, which I'm sure we have data that way. So we calculate one, two, three, four times 15. And then whatever difference is, we got to figure out, okay, we got to charge this amount for adults, right? So that we can have this course. We know we know what the course costs. It costs thirty thousand dollars for cosmetology. But it's it should be the same thing for adults. It's not, adults it's, are going to pay the amount that they think that it's the the course is going to give right, so value to them. So I I feel like they're is a way like that's how pricing and markets are always done like that's why figure out what is the the consumer's like willingness to pay for something but at the same time we have our own cost we got to figure out we got to cover our costs right exactly so, that's so why, i think so like the going rate, there so the going rate for our classes cost. no our going rate is fair in for the adults it is a fair cost mm -hmm. right we're not crazy expensive or cheap or it's a fair cost right and so that's why for us it's trying to determine right is that can we raise the so the uh, the um the uh, the base cost for the kids, students, right? Because that's different. It is significantly different, right? What we charge an adult is because it's different because the kids, we, the funding, where does the funding come from the state? It comes from the state, right? From us, right? And so because of that, it has to be different than what we can charge the adults. That's just the reality, right? And so trying to figure out what is that basis for each individual cost for a kid is difficult. Whatever we decide on the kid is going to be compensated or you know, equalized based upon adults, right? It has to, right? Whatever we get from the kids is gonna have to be covered best by the adults. There's no way around it, right? And so, and hopefully we don't make that be high, that much higher so that we won't, obviously if we make it too high, then we're not gonna get the adult students. So then we can't offer that class. That's why it's a nuance. It's very, it's very fluid that cost, right? We just know what the cost of the class costs, 30,000. That's our instructor fee and the consumables. That's all we know, right? So then we got to figure out, okay, we know that, Automotive cost twenty thousand. Okay, so how are we going to get to that twenty thousand? Right, we know we would charge one, two, three, four. We know what are we can do, but that's what it is. That's, that's what so, I'm saying. So yeah, that's yeah. that's reasonable to me. But yeah. what like my thing is that whatever proposal comes before us, yes. I want to make sure that we are understanding that that is for that is the cost of running yeah. these individual oh, classes yeah, sure. and yeah. not for the sustained like so that we can maintain the uh, financial sustainability of the larger organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think whatever we come back with will be an explanation of that. It would have to be, we would have to explain why we came up with that number. Yeah. Whatever that number is. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, comments from the board? So can, so if I were to go back to SoCal Rock, would I, can I say we're at least open to the idea or would that be too much to say? I I still don't understand how we can be like, we're not open to the idea and then we they don't raise the fees. Like that's no, I'm not, not I, a possibility either, right? Like it is a possibility. If the boards, if the districts come back saying, you know what, our board sentiment is not for this at all. If three of the districts come back, that's done. We're not going to raise the fee. That's it. That's the thing, right? The districts, are the ones who are gonna vote on whether or not that's what it is, right? So if we say no, the other districts say yes, then we're gonna go ahead with it, you know? And so, and then, you know, we can come back and whatever that price is gonna be, it's gonna be because the majority of the board, right? At, at SoCal Rock itself, right? So I think what, what I, 
like I said, they wanted us to go back. They wanted me at least to go back and to see where your board is at, even though I kind of felt where it, where it might be. So um, that's what I'm trying to ask. Like, what is the message you would like me to bring back uh, to SoCal Rocks board regarding the increase in fees? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's why we're having a discussion. To hearing what yeah. the fees are. Okay, be. okay. Like, mm -hmm. I'm still what I said at the end. I, I need to see the value before I discuss increasing the fees. I don't see the value yet. President Holland, I think I've kind of stated my opinions that I think we're we're lacking the data, um, such as what's why is the trend been what it is, where is it going? Um, are we able to Supplement that trend with our courses, El Camino, um, adult school. So really, what's the plan for SoCal Rock? Where are they headed? And how are they formulating their cost structure? And what's that gap? And therefore, what's their proposed increase? And then with all that information, if that can be presented, then I think we might have a meaningful conversation to see if that's something we would like to digest or not. I think currently everything seems so vague right now. We don't have enough information on this. So I think we should wait and see what's coming before we make a decision to approve or not approve anything. Thank you. Any other comments, thoughts? All right, thank you for the discussion. Um, moving forward, and again, I, I again, just going forward, I, I really want to express that um, that we figure a way also as a board how we can collaborate better um, with um, with SoCal Rock. Um, and so it's just this institution is uh, a, 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 to me an asset to our community, and we do have a voice and a seat on the board of SoCal Rock. And, and, I, and I think that um, it, we should be able to utilize that to the best of our ability, to for the best interest of Florence Unified, as well as for the um, for SoCal Rock itself. Um, moving on to consent items, um, would, does anybody want to pull anything or can we get a motion to approve the consent items? 15.8. 15.8. 8. Anyone else? 15.9. 15.9. 15 15.2. Two. Anyone else? Oh, nothing, Dr. Muhammad. Mine was fifteen point eight. It's already okay. Done. All right. So can can we get a motion to approve consent items except um, all consent items except for fifteen point two, fifteen point eight, and fifteen point nine? So moved. We got a first and second. second. We got a first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion approved. So fifteen point two. I forgot who said 15. I did. Okay. <laughs> As 15.2 is approval for Katie Klumpy and Katie Schinkelberg to attend the National Association of Young Children Annual Conference in Washington, D.C. Um, Dr. Klumpy, thank you in advance for uh, attending this conference. I like to note that a lot of times our cabinet members and other um, teachers and administrators attend conferences like this to to learn from the other districts. And so um, what more that we can do and how to better our district. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, I'm just curious as to this conference, can you tell us a little bit about the um, this NAEYC? Actually, there's an E, uh, the, the subject didn't say for the education of young children, but what you um, are focusing on, what you plan to learn, what do you, is there a theme to this conference this year? So with with uh, trying to be more inclusionary with our preschool program and with a new um, coordinator of early childhood education, um, neither one of us have have attended an early childhood conference before. So we're in need of of educating ourselves and and, and learning together um, to come back with a comprehensive plan. Um, to kind of extend our vision to ensure that we are offering the most opportunities that we can for for our three and four year olds. 
um, as we move from from um, you know a, a Tykes preschool and a launch preschool, looking into a possible um, you know fee based preschool, so that we can offer as much early childhood education and assistance for our families as possible. So um, thematically, because of the the it, for for us, um, there are new. Um, there are new guidelines within California um, that that are maybe new in California for in, ensuring that our preschool programs um, are, are, have full inclusion of our special eds and our highest need students in those classes. Um, it is not um, new to a lot of other states in the in the country. So part of part of that um, the national conference is looking at how to infuse. Um, special education students into our existing preschool programs, um, and so that that's one of the predominant reasons um, that 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 we're attending, and also to look at what um, you know, and following what we do as a district, how to how to provide professional development um, and collaboration activities for for our our teachers because they're funded differently. Um, they go to school in different times. They've not been part of the K-12 system. And we're looking at designing a plan and a program so that we can um, have highly, highly trained, um, you know, uh, uh, teachers that teach our youngest kids. Great. Thank you. I, I uh, yeah, I didn't think that we went to this conference before. So this is a new thing. Wonderful. Do you by any chance know if it's always in Washington, D.C.? I, I don't think it's always in Washington, D.C. I think they move um, move across the, um, the across, country, to be across fair. Across the country, yeah. yeah. Cool. I just happened to be there at that exact same time that you'll be there, actually. Oh, well, you can host us. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I move that we approve 15.2. Second. We got a first, second. All those favors say aye. 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 All right. Moving forward to 15.8. Approval for Torrance Unified School District to enter into an additional consultant agreement with South Bay Children's Health Center. Yeah, so it states that we're going to be um, expanding our current agreement to include six additional clinicians and social workers. Um, is there a reason that we are not able to fill those positions in-house? What is, what, why is this um, consultancy, why is it needed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, we have flown this position for our social workers and we have been unable to fill them at this time. Um, and so South Bay Children's has, has graciously offered to assist us mm -hmm. um, and provide us um, uh, looking, for those, um, looking for those employees um, with a full understanding that we will continue to recruit and find the employees as well. And they will pull back um, and adjust the contract as, as needed. So we're not bound. Um, you know, for the entirety of a, of a school year, they're being very, um, very strong and, and, and collaborative partners with us on this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions about this? Yes, go Dr. Mohamed. President Ron, I, my only comment on this item was that um, I would like if there's concurrence from the board to have an updated presentation at some point uh, over the next couple of months, just on the general status of our mental health and wellness centers um, in our district, how are we currently staffed, um, what's been the caseload like, um, and what more do we need to do, where are some of the areas of opportunities and challenges. So um, just if we can have a presentation on that, I'd like to understand more about our general status of mental health and wellness in our district. I agree. I think that's a very good idea. I I have um, searched for information regarding mental health that our district has been providing um, all this time because I know we have been doing that. And what what we've done, you know, what what more we could do. Um, how many how many students, how many employees uh, utilize our mental health system um, resources? Um, I think we've done a lot in this field as. The, Obviously, you guys know this is one of my top priorities. And so I think a presentation on the current status of what we've been doing, what we're going to do, and how it's been would be wonderful. And I, I think what would be helpful, too, is to identify what we mean by mental health. Uh, I think we, we this word has been tossed around. And I, I'm not sure about my, my colleagues up here. I don't know uh, what this is. Uh, I, I don't know when we say mental health well-being. I, 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 I get an idea, but uh, I don't get a full-on understanding, a picture, to be honest with you. I just, when I talk about mental health, I'm doing well. That's what I think about mental health. But 
Um, I, I wonder, like, are there categories for this or are there metrics for this? Or um, just so that you can afford, like, like Dr. Muhammad said, just informing us. Um, I, I think that we use terms um, just because they seem to be politically correct terms. But I kind of want to have a better understanding of what we mean of mental health and, and, and what is the goal of mental health well-being. Like, is there... At what point do we say they're mentally healthy or well-being at that point? I just, again, just inform me. Uh, maybe I'm just being naive here. I just, um, I'm just kind of curious how, or are there metrics when when, the, when our government talks about this, um, things like that, unless you guys know better than me. So, yeah. So then can we get a motion to approve 15.8? So moved. Second. We got to first say all those in favor say aye. Aye. Fifteen point nine approval for Torrance Unified School District to enter into an agreement with Hazard Young, Atia, and Associates to provide consulting services. Mrs. Park. No, me. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gray. No, no. This Sorry. is this is the thing I always get excited about every time I see it on the agenda, and 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 can never get enough information from Dr. Crumpy. Um, I'm excited that uh, you know. I remember when I went into your office and asked about two language dual immersion and you planned it during a pandemic, which and started it during a pandemic, which is just so amazing. Um, and so happy that we have two programs underway and that um, this isn't just about um, increasing the um, the success of the programs we have, but also working on adding additional languages. And I'm very excited and and just can't express how happy I am about this and that I hope um, to continue to get updates from you on on how um, Hazard Young and Atiyah are assisting in, in making this happen as we expand our program. So keep it up. Good job. Thank you. I ask that we approve 15.9. Can we get a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. All right. Going forward. Um, Comments from members of the Board of Education. Um, so obviously, SoCal Rock, we've, we've discussed it enough, so I don't think I have to give you any more presentation on that. Uh, CSBA Delegate Report, Dr. Um, from, uh, Dr. Gerson. All right, I have a little bit of stuff for you this time. Um, so I don't know if everybody noticed, but on Saturday, um, hackers released some sensitive student information, including social security numbers in the dark web from LA Unified, um, not Torrance Unified students. But I know that, uh, that our chief technology officer, um, Mr. Mara is always um, talking about protecting us, is constantly looking at new systems, um, constantly bringing stuff before us and trying to stay ahead of, of those that would do us harm. And I just want to thank you because I know that is a constant, constant worry for you and, and uh, appreciate it. Um, and we, uh, we all need to protect ourselves, um, make sure that we're... Uh, uh, you know, that we're staying, staying safe, letting Mr. Mara know if we see anything, um, prevent um, and reporting anything that uh, looks fishy um, with a pH there for you. Um, the, in a nationally representative federal survey released, 60% um, of principals surveyed said that they're struggling to fill non-teaching positions, while 48% reported hiring teachers has been a challenge. For both teaching and non-teaching openings, more than six in 10 school leaders said their biggest challenge has been finding enough candidates to apply, much less fully qualified ones. Um, nearly half of school nurses say they have felt bullied, threatened, or harassed since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, those are among the preliminary findings of a survey of 8,000 school nurses um, representing all 50 states, tribal nations, U.S. territories, and the District of Columbia. And that was put out by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in association with the National Association of School Nurses and the National Association of State School Nurses. Uh, AB 2584 was signed by Governor Newsom. Uh, the bill's author was Assemblymember Mark Berman of Menlo Park, um, and he says... While recalls can be an important tool to hold elected officials accountable, the bar is so low to initiate a recall that it has been weaponized against elected officials at all levels of government, but especially school board members. Thanks to the governor's signature, AB 2584, will ensure that the process to initiate a recall is rigorous enough to demonstrate that it is a serious effort, that voters are provided accurate and truthful information, and that we won't waste limited public resources and funds intended for students. And then there was Senate Bill 1061, which was also signed by Governor Newsom, 
Um, that bill's author was Senator John Laird of Santa Cruz, who says, now that the governor has signed 1061 into law, districts can streamline and reduce the cost of the elections when they occur. In fact, provisions in SB 1061, as seen in a 2022 Middletown School District special election, can help reduce costs by as much as 50%. That's real financial relief, especially for smaller school districts that are more severely impacted by any unexpected hit to their budget. Uh, Governor Newsom also signed uh, Senate Bill 490, which will impose ongoing cost increases of up to 25% annually for school nutrition spending at the state's TK through 12 school districts, county offices of education, community colleges, and four-year universities. Uh, this law is a tariff on foreign food products, and everyone's hoping that the governor will make sure to include those increased costs in the next state budget. Uh, Senate Bill 70, which was uh, Rubio of Baldwin Park, uh, would have made kindergarten mandatory beginning in the 2024-25 school year by requiring all students uh, to have completed one year of kindergarten before starting first grade. Um, that was vetoed by the governor. Assembly Bill 1973, McCarthy of Sacramento was also vetoed. That would have required school districts to provide one full day kindergarten class uh, beginning in 27-28 for schools with an unduplicated pupil percentage of 50% or more and beginning in 29-30 for all other schools. The veto message for both bills included a warning that, quote, with our state facing lower than expected revenues over the first few months of this fiscal year, it is important to remain disciplined when it comes to spending, particularly spending that is ongoing. Um, and CSBA also noted that the governor has included this language in rejecting a number of bills uh, not funded by this year's budget, not just legislation addressing public education. So that's a little update from CSBA. Thank you, Dr. Sun. So glad you're doing this. You're the most thorough guy I know, so that's why I appreciate it. So it's thank good. You. Any other comments from the board? Uh, we'll talk with Dr. Mohammed. No, thank you, President. Mohammed. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Park. Yes, um, I think also in honor of Yom Kippur being celebrated on Wednesday, um, Governor Newsom signed a bill recognizing Lunar New Year. It's a California state holiday, um, and I thought that was just very cool to see, and, and I think one of my favorite parts uh, of being outside of Torrance or outside of the U.S. has been being able to share my cultural heritage, um, taking friends out for Chuseok to Korean restaurants and things like that. And so um, I really appreciate um, how our district is so diverse and there are so many opportunities for, for students, for teachers, for parents to be able to celebrate the heritage. So mm -hmm. in addition to it being Hispanic Heritage Month. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Park. Um, Mrs. Liu? Yes, thank you, President Han. Um, I'd like to point out that under the general functions agenda, uh, consent agenda items, today we passed a resolution to support the California Clean Air Day, California Clean Air Day, which is on October 5th, this is coming Wednesday. I want to encourage everyone to um, uh, go out there and do whatever you can, at least just for this one day. Um, this resolution um, I drafted this resolution a few years ago, and I'm very happy that we are continuing to um, approve this, uh, support this. California Clean Air Day was a um, major success for a coalition for clean air, a nonprofit that's statewide, that's devoted, the only statewide organization devoted to clean air. And it matters a lot. Um, I was on the board, so I know a little bit about it. But um, I'm just very happy to see that we are encouraging our school administrators, teachers, and other employees to help teach students and others about the importance of lower emissions. One of the things that people um, that I see all the time is, is that um, there are cars outside schools when, when school ends and the cars are idling. Um, it actually creates a huge amount of pollution for for that particular area. And this is where the school is, and this is where all our children go to. So we, especially if we can remember not just to carpool and conserve energy, but also not idle our cars um, while waiting for our kids to come out of our schools. Um, that's one major one. And another one that I want to recognize uh, is our resolution proclaiming October 9th to 15th as the week of the school administrators. Uh, we've always done this uh, every year, and 
just want to give some recognition to this, that it is, you know, along with the um, teachers and other employees, the administrators really help make our success, help make uh, pupil uh, achievement successful in our district. And lastly, my usual um, congratulatory um, recognition of our classified employees who have uh, um, an anniversary uh, in how long they have worked for our school district. We have from South High School, Lovita Pollock, who has served our district for 15 years. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Pollock. And for 20 years, we have from Calle Mayor Middle School, Latasha Cooper, and from Hickory Elementary School, Cindy Hamill. Thank you for your 20 years of service. And lastly, for our 25 years, and we don't always get this every at every meeting, we have from Torrance High School, Mary Ann Sablan, who has uh, who's also the school staff assistant one. Thank you very much, Ms. Sablan, for your um, loyal and continued service to our district and to our students. That's Thank it, President Han. Anything else, Dr. Gerson? Oh, I won't, Ms. Park. Thank you for Mrs. Park. Sorry. Um, thank you for bringing up uh, Yom Kippur and the Jewish New Year, and I look forward to celebrating the Lunar New Year with you. Um, but I just wanted to remind everyone to support their local school by signing up for the Sketcher, Sketchers Friendship Walk. Thank you, Dr. Gerson. Uh, again, so a couple things for me is again, I do appreciate um, that October 9th or 15th is School Administrator Week. I have to say that because my wife is a school administrator. So I say, hey, honey, good job, good job. So I will appreciate you next week. Uh, so again, all the administrators, again, we have a lot of new administrators at our schools. And so we're appreciative of all your hard work and all that you have done. Um, also homecoming, we're excited for the homecoming. I know that, um, you know, now you have a kid in college, it's always good when they come home, to, at least they come to homecoming. He hasn't come home yet, but he's coming for homecoming. And so it's good. And so it's just good to see all our graduates come back and to celebrate. That's one of the beautiful things about our city and our school district. And we just, it's a big family. So it's always good. So we wish all our students a great week. Uh, good luck in the homecoming games itself. There are two things that I want like to address though. Um, I want to express my appreciation to uh, Mr. Mara. Again, as Dr. Gerson has mentioned, um, cybersecurity has been all over the news, especially with LUSD's um, ransomware situation. Um, it, it's a very serious issue, and I want everyone to understand that uh, we are on top of this. Uh, we have a great staff, and so and do there all that we can. Again, we all need everybody's participation. Everyone's got to do their part, and so um, so again, we do appreciate it. Um, it's it's not easy. It was interesting to see how many districts were hacked this year uh, by this one source, and so um, it's just something to be wary of. And so, um, but again, we want the public to know that um, our staff is on top of it and they're doing a great job. And so we do appreciate them. And um, so again, we have to work on this together. The last thing I kind of want to discuss uh, or to share with you is um, yesterday, my nephew had um, a friend just die um, of a fentanyl overdose, um, another LUSD just, just uh, this past week, this, this weekend, it was his friend. And it finally hit home close to home for us because of the fact that um, I, I texted him today, making sure he was okay to lose a friend. Um, and obviously this fentanyl overdose situation has now become a, a, an epidemic. And I think that um, something that we as a district are, are trying to address right now as well. And we know that um, I want the public to know as well that we are working on coming with a policy and to thinking of this thing through. And so I appreciate the cabinet for uh, working on this. And so, um, and I look forward to seeing um, what we will do to address this issue. Um, and so, but I want the public to know that we are addressing uh, aware of this issue. And at the same time, to encourage the public to talk to their kids um, about this, it, it all begins at home. And so um, it is becoming um, an epidemic in my opinion, um, especially when we see how many kids have passed away in LUSD. This is their eighth kid, I think, or ninth kid. Um, and so it is, it is it's, it's an issue. And so, but I want the public to know that we as a district are aware of this and we want to do the best that we can to keep our kids safe as well. So appreciation to all the cabinet for everyone that works so hard for the safety of our kids um, and all that they do. And so if we can have a motion now. President uh, Han, may I add yes, something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that uh, it's on the fentanyl issue. I'm very sorry um, to hear the loss of your son, friend, and um, if the son of a friend of mine, he um, has also had also um, recently passed away from a fentanyl overdose. That I think um, a lot of people don't know 
what a lot of people don't know is that obviously it's not regulated as it is illegal, but a lot of different medications out there, um, such as those for ADHD or so, could be laced with fentanyl and an unknown amount, an uncontrolled amount of fentanyl, and thus um, having the student um, overdose and, and, and die. My friends, the son of my friend, he is not a uh, recre recreational drug user. He's actually a very good student at medical school. And um, his friend offered him, <clears throat> uh, it's one of those ADHD Adderall or something like that, that would help him study for the final the, the next day. And it wasn't, it was completely, you know, they, they, he had no idea that this medication, this one pill uh, did not come from a pharmacy, a legitimate pharmacy, but rather came from drug dealers who, who did put too much fentanyl there. And I just want to students if, and parents out there to know that if this is usually a curse in college, if they, if the student um, is want to take a drug to help them concentrate for um, a final or so. I don't know if it really does work, but they shouldn't be doing it anyway. It should be prescribed by a medical doctor. But just in case that they do, they want to make sure it came from a legitimate pharmacy. Um, I attended a um, narcotics um, prevention unit under the United Nations in Vienna recently on this. I attended it, participated, talked about the story that I know about, and it is very scary. You know, a lot of our students, our, our kids, we all think our kids are good kids, yes, but they just might not know that we're not something is laced with fentanyl. So I just want to put that out there just in case any parent or students is thinking of using some supposedly uh, study helping medication. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Liu. Um, can we have a motion to adjourn in memory of retired teacher Dolores Throat? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.